Good morning. What's up, everybody? How are you? Welcome to the Worship Team Training Tuesday show. I'm Brandon Dempsey. It's great to have you today. How are you guys? Man, it's been a while. It's been since last Thursday, but still, I miss you guys. Not the same. It's always better when we're here together. How are you guys? What is going on on this fantastic, terrific Tuesday? I hope you guys are doing great. Facebook Live and Periscope, what's going on? If you guys would, go ahead and take the time, please, to swipe and invite. Let all your friends, your worship leaders, your singers, your musicians, your pastors, let all of them know what's going on, and please share this out, because today, this message is going to help somebody, and I hope that it helps you. So please go ahead and share this out. How are you guys doing today? I hope that everything is going well for you. Who am I? My name is Brandon Dempsey, and this is Worship Team Training, and simply, I'm a follower of Jesus and happen to lead this ministry, two of them called Worship Team Training. Dot com and also Worship Team Training University. And we're just taking time right now for some guys to come on in. And I'm just going to go through the rest of what we do on the show to welcome you and to also welcome our not just our live viewers, but also our playback. Those of you who are listening to us through your Alexa Echo and also your iTunes and iHeartRadio. Thank you guys so much for joining us today in the broadcast. And I uh, am just happy to come here every week. We do these Tuesday shows at 11 a.m. And they're to benefit you, to inspire, to encourage you as a worship leader. You may be in a worship team. You may be on the rotation this week. You may not be. But so what? It all matters about serving God and being in his ministry. Big shout out to all of our friends, both in Wisconsin, also in Biloxi, Mississippi. We were up there for the past two weeks and just had an awesome time with these churches, uh, Bethel Baptist and also Northside Assembly of God, woohoo, and a lot of other great churches that came to visit as well. So we had more of them that were on the way. And man, what a fantastic time we had. But wow, we have such a great week this week coming up. You don't want to miss this because, man, we have some great, great guests for you. On the program this coming Thursday, we're going to have Sandra McCracken. And if you don't know who Sandra McCracken is, just a wonderful modern hymn writer, realist of uh, leading worship in her church and also making music to many. She's going to be with us this Thursday at 11 a.m. So you have to become a member at WTTU.co to watch and engage and ask Sandra your questions. That's going to be huge. So all you songwriters out there are those who love doing modern hymns. This is going to be a perfect opportunity for you to listen to Sarah's new album called Steadfast and much, much more. So be sure to join us this coming Thursday. You can find the link below and also uh, you can find it on our events page at WTTU.co. And this coming Friday, wow, this coming Friday, there's a lot happening this whole week. We have two big mega things going on, and I, we are so excited. Uh, a big work that our staff has been pulling off this past week. And just want to say a big thank you to all the team pulling it together. This coming Friday, we have two big events happening. We are doing a grand opening of our Worship Team Training University and that is a brand new site we're releasing this coming Friday. You can find a picture of what it looks like on WTTU.co. Just go to today's date on the events calendar, and you'll see it right there. You'll also find it on worshipteentraining.com. And uh, we're going to be giving discounts and opening grand prizes. And you don't want to miss the half rate that you can get right now. Actually, this whole week as we celebrate this week and this coming Friday. And the big news to help usher in this new era for us is going to be a great special friend, musical guest, worship leader, great guy all around. Tim Timmons will be here this coming Friday, so you don't want to miss that. Tim has been with us for years, and he, of course he's been doing his own music, and you hear him a lot everywhere. Tim's just got a great heart, great smile, great shine, and I mean he's just got a lot of great things to say. People love him, so you don't want to miss this. This coming Friday at 11 a.m. this coming Friday, 11 a.m. Central. You don't want to miss Tim Timmons and the grand opening of Worship Team Training University. So we're so excited to have this and to bring it to you. So let's get right on with it, shall we? Uh, we also invite you to check out what we have to offer at Worship Team Training University. Um, it is a full membership site in which you can find all of our articles, videos, mentoring, webinars, downloadable books, downloadable resources, 
24 seven at your fingertips on demand. So you don't wanna miss that. It's really, really good stuff. So moving on, uh, we have to talk today about the whole idea of leading worship through relationships. And how do we do that? So that's what we're here to talk about this morning. And I just wanna come on and share with you and just to teach during this time, uh, a lot of you, and thank you, you've been sending messages in about, hey, Brandon, can you do some teaching on your own? So we thank you guys for that. And uh, there, there's many more things that are coming ahead. So let's get right into it. And I want to also, of course, as we open up the comments, we invite you guys to ask your questions, send us your comments here through Periscope, through Facebook Live. And also, if you're listening or watching by the playback, just find a comment box window and let us know what's up. And uh, we welcome all your questions and we'll get to them. So we've been talking a lot this past two weeks about relationships, about how are we making melody within our heart? How are, we not, how are we not allowing the obstacles to get in the way of leading worship, whether it be relationships? Um, just recently, I've worked with a worship team that, yeah, there were relationships like dynamics, barriers, and things going all over the place. And, you know, that happens even within my team and with our church. You're always going to have differences you're always going to have people that are not going to agree on the same thing. And you know what? That's okay. In fact, it's better because it's healthy to disagree and to learn from one another. What's not healthy, of course, as we all know, is when drama spills out and unfavorable words that are said or any kind of cold shoulder or you know physical ways that we just kind of deflect other people. We don't want to do that. So that's what we're here to talk about today and about you know, how to cultivate rather like a spirit of love. So as you guys answer, or, or rather, I'm sorry, ask your questions right now, also give us a shout out. Let us know your name, where you're from. That would be a city or country where you live. Let us know. So thanks so much again for joining us. Let's jump right into it. Talking about relationships. Uh, the one relationship that we have right now, of course, that is paramount among all things is Jesus himself. So how do we, as worship leaders and worship team members, how do we reflect that type of unconditional love and relationship that we have in Jesus when we're leading worship? I mean, what I'm asking is, how do you lead worship in such a way that you're not worried about the song? This past weekend, that was one of our big topics, is what do you do during mistakes? What do you do by not allowing the mechanical, if you will, when you're leading worship, not allowing those mechanical logistics, mistakes, whatever that they are, get in the way. Because I've seen so many, like you too, and this may happen in your church, I've seen so many worship leaders and teams get hung up about what they're playing and what they're doing. And it's so much of a focus when you're leading worship that you're forgetting about the people that you're leading. It's so easy for us to do that, I know. But even this past weekend when I led worship, um, drummer, there was something going on and I was paying attention to what was happening. And, you know, for that split second moment, I had to realize, hey, wait a minute, I'm not the one in charge here. Who is? The Holy Spirit. So I ask you the first question, what and who are the relationships around you? When you're leading worship in your church, what and who are the relationships around you? Because when you take a grander look around the people that you're leading, hopefully you realize, what's up, Shelly Khan? And then, of course, Barry coming in on Facebook Live. Thanks, guys, so much. Um, and I want you guys to join in the conversation as well. So let us know your questions. Shelly, I'll be getting back with you. Uh, awesome member here at the university, as well as she is getting into our mentoring stuff too, our mentoring program. And anyway, getting back to this, there was that focus of not allowing those the, what we do, the mistakes, rather, to affect leading worship. Why? Because there are more people that you're leading, and that's what I was getting to the point of. When you look around, the people that you're leading in your worship environment, in your space, in your church, when you look around and see the people that you're leading, it should become more and more apparent of why you do what you do and not about what you do, uh, but more about maybe who you lead worship for, why you do these things. Because yeah, relationships, thanks Barry, um, other worship team members, other staff and pastors, 
congregation, absolutely. It's all about the people that you're leading. It's so easy for us to get caught up in the song itself or what's happening. You know, you're watching the clock, you're looking at the back wall, are the lyrics right? Did I sing the lyrics right? The pastor, are they looking at their watch? Did they got their arms folded? Or somebody else in the back, they're not singing, right? I mean, I'm speaking truth, right? All these things are happening and they're all going. So the question is, do you allow that to be the struggle? So I ask you, what is your struggle? That's the second question here. What is the struggle for you? Guys, hit me up and let me know. What is the struggle for you when you're leading worship? Is it how do you connect? I had one question this past weekend, and I had another one here. Uh, how do you lead worship when others are not singing? So that's a great question. How do you lead worship when others don't seem like they want to worship or they don't want to sing? Well, let me just dispel this one myth that just because they're not singing doesn't mean they're not worshiping, right? Many times when I've led worship or I've been in worship and other people have been leading, there are times that I don't have any words because I'm just in awe before God. Now, I did have a question over the weekend, like, what do you do when they look unhappy and they're not singing? Well, okay, you know what? Number one, you can't please everybody in the church, so stop trying that. Lose that expectation because it's not winning you and it's not winning anybody else. Secondly, it's not up to you if other people don't worship. Again, it's not up to you. Who is the real worship leader anyway? It's the Holy Spirit, God himself. And if you are allowing yourself to be a conduit of God's work, then God is going to lead worship through you. There's a big difference between you leading worship and God doing it through you. Because every time when I try to lead worship, when I try to make it my way, when I try to do it my thing, then it only comes out like me. It doesn't come out like God. It doesn't allow God to do his thing through me. So I ask you the question, are you allowing yourself to open up and to have God lead through you and nothing else? Because see, it's so easy for us to throw on the candy of lights, to throw on the great songs, to have all this cool stuff on stage and what we do to make that be the focus because you know what? It's easy to hide behind. Now look, I know I'm probably hitting you guys pretty hard, but when you look at Scripture and when you look deep within yourself and find Jesus within your heart, you got to know that there's no light show going on in your heart. There's no fog going on. There's no other things that maybe you think would make a worship service. It isn't. Because God alone is the one that we worship, and Holy Spirit is the one alone that works through your heart and my heart to lead the people in worship, and that's what it's about. So let's talk about the people. Let's talk about what's up, Amherst, Amherst Mood. Thanks so much for Pakistan coming in. Um, it is all about allowing, and Daniel Mary, what's going on? Bogged down by the details. Yeah, let's talk about that real quick. Daniel Mary, thanks so much, Facebook Live. Yeah, bogged down by all the details that I described, like the clock, the lyrics, the pressure, to sing appropriately. So let me, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, that's such a great thought. So why, why is there pressure? Why is there pressure? To do a good job? To not make a mistake? So um, on our Facebook page, if you guys are wanting to join us, it's uh, watching my Periscope. It is uh, facebook.com slash worship team training is where you can find us. We're dual broadcasting right now. Okay. Um, getting back to that, where is the pressure coming from is my question. If you think you got pressure and there's pressure about not missing the notes, um, pressure about maybe the relationships within the room, where is that pressure coming from? Is it coming from a person within your church? Is it coming from a person within your staff? Shelly Khan says, I told a story that happened in my family this week on Sunday and then connected that to the next song and it made the song more relevant to them. I got to see people's heart change in a moment and how they were singing and worshiping. Awesome. I love that. Yes. That right there is no pressure, right, Shelly? Because you gave something real to your church and you weren't afraid of it. Barry, pressure from trying to please other people often from self. Absolutely. Yeah, how many times do we do that in our own minds? I'm trying to get this right. I want to get that sung. Um, I got to make sure this guitar piano part goes off flawlessly. 
okay, why does it need to come off flawlessly, flawlessly to begin with? I, I love what we experienced back very at your church with Brothers McClurg, and Chris had said, the most worshipful times is when we make a mistake. That is when you're at your vulnerable, your vulnerable point, when you are real. It's not about you hitting or making the right note. It's about God making the right note through you. So how are you allowing God to sing his melody through your brokenness? And you may say, oh, Brandon, that's kind of deep. I mean, how, I wasn't talking about brokenness here. You know what? But when you're leading worship and you're leading people, don't you think the people around you that are coming to worship, don't you think that maybe they are broken too? Don't you think that maybe they need help within their space? Don't you think that the people that come to you with broken lives and broken relationships, maybe they need that encouragement from you, so what are you doing by not giving it to them? This is so important because this is why I'm hammering on. That's why you don't need to be focusing on the song so much because you're forgetting about them. I know, I'm going deep, sorry. Maybe I'm out of my gourd. Maybe I drank too much coffee this morning. Only had two cups. Actually, three. What does it matter? Because when you're leading worship, it, is to it should totally be about you, God, people. God first, you people because if we make it more about god the service becomes more of god if we make it more about ourselves the worship becomes about ourselves so let me ask you guys what's hitting you right now danielle talk to me asher talk to me shelly what's on your mind those of you who are watching periscope what's up thank you so much listening to playback you know what we're going to go a little long today is that okay we're going to go a little bit long because I know this is a deep topic that a lot of you guys struggle with. So what's up with the struggle? Why struggle further? Why let this be a headache every week where you're banging your head against the wall thinking, I can't do this, when reality is, is that you can do this. God has given you so many great people within your church, within your church that you are already helping. And you may say, yeah, but I'm not making a difference. Yeah, but this song didn't go off well last Sunday. Or maybe the pastor got mad at me this past week. Or I've done something here and it just didn't come out quite right. You know what? If you're trying so hard and struggling to be your best to do everything perfect, you're not allowing the best of God to do his perfection through you. Because that's really what it's more about. You know what? In fact, when you look at David and read through the Psalms, Anywhere in the Bible, do you see that anyone else other than Jesus was perfect? Was there ever a perfect worship service? Then where does this pressure come from to say that it's got to go off like this, it has to be perfected like that? For who? For God's glory or for man's glory? For your pride or for somebody else's? For God to do his work or maybe for you or someone else to take the credit? Because you know what? When people come to worship and they come to your church, they don't come there to be entertained. And if they do, if they do, then my heart falls. Because I know there's a lot of churches that want to please and want to entertain. And don't, just, don't get me wrong. There is also churches out there who they have a strategy of for, uh, for the in-church and getting in, and that's great. But still, if you're going to attract people, then don't call it worship if you want to entertain. That's where I draw the line. If you want to put on a performance to entertain people and then share the gospel, do it. Do it, and do it big, and do it well, and do it good. Don't do it cheap, and don't do it sloppy, and don't do it weak. Because people at that, when you raise that bar, they expect perfection, and then you better bring it. But you know what? If you want to bring brokenness, to a hurting world and match that with the love of Jesus so that you can tell the world, look, this is what God has done in the healing of my heart and others, and I want to share that same love with you. Then you're leading worship. Shelly Kahn, God called me to do this. This is his calling, not mine. Absolutely. It is all about the Lord doing this through us. So 
you know, the, the whole idea is that, again, we focus in on relational love is because it's the relationships within your church that matter. And this is something I said to the team up in Biloxi. And by the way, if you, if you love this teaching and you want more of this, there's two ways you can grab it. You can have me come to your church like this, and I teach just like this. I mean, everyone that's on Facebook, they know when I come to their church, this is it. We teach worship, we teach music, and you can find everything there. You can go to worshipteentraining.com slash workshops, and you can, find, uh, you can find our link and then sign up. And if you live across the world and you can't have me come to your church, then we can do a video like this with your church. Very easy. The second way that you can do this is you can find WTTU.co and you can get our membership and you will see all of what we have to offer there just for you. Uh, Asher, thank you so much for that awesome comment on Facebook Live. I appreciate that. Uh, the Word of God is alive deep within my heart, but it's also within yours. And I, I appreciate the comment. Thank you for that. Um, we are here to inspire, to lift up one another. Amen. Because, look, we're all in this together. We're all in this together by leading worship. It's not about this, I got to have it right, or it's a comparison, like the church down the street or a worship leader that I know, man, they do worship great. I wish that I can do that. You know what? The reason why you're not doing that is because God already put specific people in your church for a specific reason. How are you starting with them first? It is not about you climbing the ladder. It's not about your next step stone. It's not about your next album. Did I say that? Yes, I did. It's not about your next album or the song that your church wants to put out. It's the song that you should be singing about your church. It's the song that you need to be singing of your church. It's the songs that you need to be singing about what your people are going through in your church. And how are you celebrating that? How are you praying that? How are you praying for others? How are in the world are you lifting up the people within your church to give them to God and say, Lord, you heal. Lord, you're in charge. Lord, it's about your power. God, this is about your service. Holy Spirit, this is about you. When is the last time that you said that in worship? And I don't mean when you stepped in front of the microphone. I mean before your feet hit the floor that day. When is the last time that you got up and bowed? And you got on your knees and you said, Lord, here I am. Because when it comes to relationships, you and I, that is exactly the kind of fellowship and the kind of worship that God is looking for. It is not about what we try to get right within a service. Now, don't get me wrong, because look, people who know me, and you've had me come to your church, you've known me for years, you've been in our mentoring program, you've been through our workshops, you know that music is important to me, and getting things down, making groove happen, making the music beautiful, and making space, causing the church, and affecting the church to sing. I love with that with all my heart, but there's nothing that I love more than the Word of God. And when we get right down to who Jesus is and who Scripture is, and we begin to learn more about who God is, then it gives us greater purpose as to what we do and why we do it. So let's get back to relationships. I love Hebrews 13 that says, brotherly, it's talking about brotherly, brotherly love. The writer tells us, and I always think that it's Paul who wrote Hebrews. That's just me. But the writer tells us in chapter 13, Keep on loving each other as brothers. So let's speak to that real quick. Who are you not loving in your church? Who are you not loving on your team? Because as, if there is some barrier between you and somebody else, and that relationship is broken, so will be your leading of that worship. It will be broken. It will be frayed. It doesn't need to be perfect. And you know what? It doesn't... And this may be hard, this may sound a little tough, and I'm sorry, but it doesn't mean that you're going to like everyone in your church. I've had pastors that said, but you got to like everybody and everybody's got to be your friend. You know, there's truth and there's some tr not truth to that. I believe that we are to love everyone. I believe that we are to be friendly to everyone. I believe that we are to show love with everyone. But to like everybody, well... That's kind of difficult, right? I mean, didn't Paul have that problem with Barnabas? I mean, uh, not with Barnabas, was it? But it was Barnabas and somebody else. 
And uh, I think it was John Mark. John Mark and Barnabas had an issue. And Paul was like, look, just solve it. Just get over it and work it out. We're going to have differences. We're not going to like each other at certain points, and that's okay. But if you can still love that other person, that speaks a lot louder volumes than the differences that you may find between yourself. And you know what? The differences that you may find between each person are probably, I'm going to guarantee you, they're very small anyway. Because when you look right down to it, the problem may not be with that other person. The problem could be with us. Many times I've had to look in the mirror and say, God, what, why is it that I don't like this about this person? And God looks back at me and says, well, Brandon, um, you're the one who's got the problem with it. I don't see that in them. So I have to start with me when I look in the mirror before I lead worship. And I have to say, Lord, what is the barrier that's keeping me from connecting with other people because whatever that is, I need you to remove it. Because if we're talking about relational love and relationships, here's the thing. Hebrews 13 says, keep on loving each other as brothers. It does not say we must love or need to love as this would be some kind of a new thought. No, Hebrew ch Hebrews charges us to keep on loving one another. So it says keep on. So in other words, the loving of each other, the loving of people is ongoing. That's something that has been. Paul is saying keep on doing it. It's not this, well, we need to start now kind of thing. We should have already been doing this. And this affects us greatly when we lead worship. We see this kind of love that's expressed in the Father of knowing God's commitment to us. We have his promise as indicated in Hebrews 13, 5, where it says, I will never leave you, never will I forsake you. So with that kind of love, we are together as a worshiping church. We are a house of love for people. Broken, imperfect, smelly, sweaty, doesn't matter. What matters is how are you leading God's people and loving God's people in the church the same way as Christ. Because that, my friends, is what leading worship is about. And I've said this before many times, and I keep, I'll keep saying it again. Leading worship is about leading relationships, plain and simple. Leading worship is about leading relationships. What's your thought? I've talked a lot today. Um, I, pre I, I appreciate you guys uh, commenting in uh, Facebook Live Asher, thanks so much. Those of you on Periscope too. Um, what is right now bugging you about this topic? So hit me up, let me know. What's bugging you about the topic? What's the struggle? What's the push? Okay? Because I think that once we ask God to remove these barriers, there's so many more things that. God can do through your leading, and it, it's all about the relationships. Let me just move on. Um, building on the rock. Uh, this is where Jesus said, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. It's a foundation. Uh, we see this in Ephesians 2.20 and also Isaiah 28.16. So I say... Uh, Thanks, Barry. He says, you know, the leading worship, he says, great thought. Leading worship is about leading relationships. Absolutely. It's, it is all about the rock that we stand together, that God's formed within us a foundation to hold up one another. And when we lead worship, that is what it's about. And um, I love the fact that we can come to you each week, that we have this relationship with you. Every week we come to you on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Central. And also you can find us on Worship Team Training University, that's WTTU.co, and you can get more of this. But we do this, we do what we do because we love the relationships with you. We love pouring into you, inspiring and encouraging you because you're going to go back to your worship team. And I'm praying that you take this and share this with them. That you take this, thank you Shelly, you take this encouragement and share this with those that may be having a tougher time than you. Maybe there's somebody in your church that in your worship team, they cannot get over this one relationship, or maybe it's broken. I had to work with a worship leader this past weekend because of the same thing. And I had to tell her, you know what? This relationship that you have with this person matters. 
because it's not just about what you're going through. It matters to them. It matters what they're going through. You're the leader, so step it up. Get with your team. Again, like Paul told Barnabas, work it out. Get over it. You know why? Because nobody else cares except you. <laughs> I know that's kind of tough, but it's like I look that I look at that within my own heart. And you know, if I'm not right with my brother or sister, how can I bring my gift to God? How can I come before the altar with a pure heart? I have to get over it. If it's something that I've done, maybe something that I didn't get right on my own preparation time, whatever that it is, it's my fault. I got to fix that. It's nobody else's. So. There it is, and it's all about being real. And you know what? If I don't have it down, I know there's 10,000 other guys in the room that don't have it down either. And you know what? I'm exactly right where I want to be. I'm right exactly where God wants me to be at, in leading worship because God doesn't want my perfection. God would rather have my practice, a practice of loving God daily, of worshiping him unrehearsed, unscripted, authentic and honest. I'll leave that with you today. I thank you so much for coming in. Hey, join us this coming Thursday. Sandra McCracken is coming at 11 a.m. You got to be a member at WTTU.co to watch it. And we watch it on our closed Facebook University group, also our closed Periscope, Periscope and uh, many other things too uh, when you join. Downloads, there's, there's so much more. Don't forget, this coming Friday, Tim Timmons at 11 a.m. He is going to help us kick off our new Washington Training University site. I can't wait. The guys are working hard. The pressure's on. But, man, we're going to have so much fun. I can't wait. Tim is going to be talking about his new album. I can't wait for this. And you got to be ready because, man, you don't want to miss what's coming with Tim Timmons. And if I can just kind of give you a little preview, uh, Tim has been in deep work with his new album and the new content that he's been coming up with. And we're so excited. We've been back and forth with his record company and working with all the different things. Who I Am is what we're going to be talking about. That is new, his new release that we'll be talking about this coming Friday at 11 a.m. Central. And you can find more if you go to WTTU.co. You'll find it on the events. Um, but you can also win the track, Who I Am. Tim is going to be talking about also... Uh, 10,000 Minutes with Kids in Children's Worship. So that is to look forward to his story, uh, what Tim is going to be sharing. So you don't want to miss this. Uh, free downloads, giveaways, and also special pricing into our WTTU.co membership. So be sure to join us. Got to go. Love you. Thank you guys so much for being here and coming in and letting us know what's happening in your church and your world, you're important to us. We love you. Thank you so much. Share this out with people that you know. Share this out with friends today. And may this encourage you and your walk and others that you're bringing along in God's worship. Love you. And remember to lead relationships. And we'll see you very soon. Love you. Bye.